With a mix of rain and snow moving in, we've left our boondocking spot in the Bradshaw Mountains from last week's episode from Prescott and escaped to the comfort of full hookups at lower elevation in Camp Verde, Arizona. In this week's episode of Grand Adventure, we'll explore the historic mining town of Jerome. So stick around. For our visit to Jerome, we're staying at the brand new Verde Ranch RV Resort in Camp Verde. This park is conveniently located right off I-17 and features 398 full hookup RV sites with 50 amp service, a few of which are even covered for protection from the hot Arizona summer sun. Sites range in price from $35 to $75 per night. We've opted for one of the cheap seats a 50 amp full hookup back in sight. It's a comfortable stay here at Verde Ranch, although we are on the receiving end of some highway noise from the nearby freeway. None of these sites are exactly level either, but it's nothing that can't be solved with a few leveling blocks. In these days of COVID-19, most of the park's facilities remain closed, including the beautiful clubhouse that we'll have to enjoy through the windows. One amenity that remains open, however, is the laundry. We'll take advantage of our days here to catch up on one of the less glamorous, but nevertheless adventurous, tasks of RV life. Before we head up to Jerome, let's take a brief look at Central Arizona's Verde Valley surrounding our RV park. The valley's history of European settlement dates back to 1865, when Camp Verde was established as a military fort to protect settlers along the banks of the Verde River from Apache raids. Today, its mostly sunny weather and moderate year-round temperatures attract retirees, tourists, and part-time residents. The town hosts an annual corn festival, Fort Verde Days, the Pecan Wine and Antiques Festival, and a Crawdad Festival. Several national monuments surround Camp Verde. 
thanks to the coronavirus, all are closed. But that won't keep us from catching a glimpse from above. Before any viewer takes issue with these scenes, we launched our drone from outside of each monument's legislative boundary, making each of these flights completely legal. While we'd avoid doing so anyway under normal circumstances, simply out of courtesy to others when these monuments are open, there's no one there to disturb today. Just a few miles up the road from Camp Verde, the historic mining town of Jerome sits on a shoulder of the Mingus Mountains. Supported in its heyday by rich copper mines, it was home to more than 10,000 people in the 1920s. Today, however, its population has dwindled to less than 500, which is actually up from the less than 100 who inhabited Jerome in the 1950s. Locals now mine tourism instead of copper to fuel their economy. Jerome became a National Historic Landmark in 1967, and visitors today will find art galleries, coffee houses, restaurants, a state park, and a local museum devoted to mining history. At the start of the 19th century, when the population was 78% male, thriving businesses in Jerome included saloons, gambling halls, and prostitution. In 1903, the New York Sun newspaper proclaimed Jerome to be the wickedest town in the West. When the last of Jerome's copper mines closed in 1953, the few remaining residents organized the Jerome Historical Society and opened a museum and gift shop. By sponsoring music festivals, historic home tours, celebrations and races, the community succeeded in attracting visitors and new businesses to Jerome. The Jerome Grand Hotel is housed in what once was the town's hospital, constructed in 1926. After laying empty for 44 years, it became a hotel in 1994.
1962, the heirs of James Douglas, head of the United Verde Extension Mining Company, donated the Douglas Mansion above the UVX mine site to the state of Arizona to create Jerome State Historic Park. The mansion was built in 1916 as a hotel for mining officials and investors, as well as for the Douglas' own family. It featured a wine cellar, billiard room, marble shower, steam heat, and much ahead of its time, a central vacuum system. Douglas was most proud of the fact that the house was constructed of adobe bricks that were made on the site. The house is the largest adobe structure in Arizona. The old mansion is now a museum devoted to the history of the Jerome area and the Douglas family. The museum features exhibits of photographs, mining artifacts, and minerals, in addition to a video presentation and a 3D model of the town with its underground mines. One room, the Douglas Library, is restored as a period room. While most of Jerome remains closed due to COVID-19, including the Jerome State Historic Park, access to the adjacent Audrey Headframe Park remains open. This largest wooden head frame in Arizona was completed in 1918 to haul ore up from the Little Daisy Mine, which was spectacularly profitable, producing more than $125 million worth of ore and paying more than $50 million in dividends. Here you can stand on the plexiglass plate and stare down into an illuminated shaft that's 1,900 feet deep. We sincerely hope that you've enjoyed exploring Jerome with us. We air new adventure travel videos of Grand Adventure each and every Wednesday evening. So if you're not yet a Grand Adventurer, now's the time to go smash that little red subscribe button in the lower right corner of your screen. Ring that notification bell too, to ensure that you catch each of our weekly episodes. We'd be honored if you shared Grand Adventure with your friends, family, and on social media. And we always love to hear from you after each video in the comment section down below. Until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you next week.